So on number 27, we're looking for the half-life of some substance that decays at a continuous rate of 11% per minute. So what we know so far is that the amount we're going to have is going to be P e to the, and because it's decaying, that's going to be a negative 0.11 T. So are we okay with that much? See how the information we get converts to that. We want to know its half-life. So we want to know when, how long, will it take till we have, have half of what we started with. So our starting amount, when you plug in zero, you're going to get P. So half of that is going to be one half P, is that okay? And so now what we want to do is solve for that T. So we can divide by the P. It turns out it doesn't make any difference how much you start with. It's going to take the same amount of time for a ton to decay as it is for an ounce to decay. So that divides out, and we have one half is e to the negative 0.11t. Because we're trying to solve for a variable that's in the exponent, we want to take the log of both sides. Because it's an exponential base Euler's number, it's going to be easier, simpler for us to take the natural log of both sides. So we're going to do this. Now, what we get uh, here is a chance to play around with our uh, knowledge of logarithms. Now, all this is going to eventually go in the calculator anyway, so you don't have to do this stuff on the left side. <coughs> but it's kind of a nice way to reinforce what we know. So we know that the log of a fraction, a division, is the difference in the log units. So we can call that natural log 1 minus natural log 2. And again, you don't have to do that. On the other side, we do know that a logarithm base Euler's number and an exponential base Euler's number are inverses. Those are going to cancel, and we'll just get negative 0.11t. Now, we also, hopefully, are trying to know that the natural log of 1 is 0. So that's negative natural log 2. We can divide by the negative 0.11, and that's going to be our half. And that will be in minutes, right? because we're in uh, percent per minute. What else? That's it, huh? <coughs> OK, Let's, uh, we want to talk today about graphing logarithms, which we've done a little bit of, but we'll try to do some more with. Uh, so this is more on 5.2. And before I jump into that, uh, I want to really kind of emphasize this whole idea of this inverses, that an exponential and a logarithm are inverse of each other, and to, to kind of reinforce that. So uh, y equals logarithm base b of x, and uh, y equals b to the x are inverses. And we know that f of f inverse of x, for any pair of inverse functions, has to be what? x. And also f inverse of f of x is going to also give us that same thing, that same input value x. So whatever changes one function makes, the other undoes. So we, this means we get, when you're starting out, it looks kind of strange, but we have to kind of get familiar with that, you know, something like 3 to a logarithm base 3 of 7 is going to be 7. Okay, because these are inverses of each other. It's like taking f of f inverse of 7 is going to give us just 7. Similarly, something like the natural log of, say, e to the 3 halves power is going to be 3 halves. Because a logarithm and a base Euler's number and an exponential base Euler's number are inverses. And so they're going to just cancel each other out and give us that 3 halves. We can disguise it more. So we can do something like, say, 5 to the logarithm say, base 5 of the square root of 5. 
Yeah, so it's it's a little more disguised because what we have or let me do I don't know if I go that way. That's a little too far. So let me just uh oh, I didn't want to go there. So we'll just leave it at, at there. So that's gonna be just that okay? So if we do something like the natural log of uh, the cube root of e, we can do that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, because the cube root of e is a power of e, you can write it as an exponent base e. So that's the natural log of e to the one third. And now we have a logarithm base Euler's number and an exponent base Euler's number, and that's going to be just the one third. Is that okay? And if we have something like, uh, say, the log, so now we're a common logarithm, and we have something like 0 0.001, that's a little more disguised. Good, because 0 0.001 is a power of 10. So that is going to be 10 to the negative 3 power. Are you with me? And that's now a logarithm base 10 and an exponential base 10 cancel each other out. It's going to be just the negative 10. Another thing is that the natural log of 1 is 0, right? Because this is like taking the natural log of e to the zero. So logarithm base Euler's number and exponential base Euler's number is going to be that. The log of one is also zero, right? Because that's also a log of 10 to the zero. Does that make sense? So the takeaway is the logarithm any base of one is So using this idea of inverses, I think, can help with graphing uh, when you get confused. So the goal, the ultimate goal, is just to know what the graph of a logarithm looks like, like, like a parent function. And then just to know that and be able to go from there. But if you're not sure, you can kind of reinforce it by plugging in a couple of carefully selected uh, numbers for x. <clears throat> so if we go to graph this, then if you know that what we want to plug in for x for the logarithm is going to be a power of whatever the base is. Those are the things that work out nice. So for example, we know that the log of 1, when x is 1, you're going to get the log base 2 of 1 is equal to y. And that's going to be 0 no matter what the logarithm. So all logarithm graphs, until they've been translated and reflected, are going to contain the point 1, 0. Does that make sense? Because the log any base of 1 is 0. And then if you want to, just to reinforce, you can put in some powers of 2. So choose values of x that are powers of the base. So the logarithm base 2 of 2 to the first is going to be right? so we know that a logarithm any base and a power of that same base are inverses they're going to cancel each other out and we're just going to get one so when we input this 2 to the first we're outputting the exponent 1 with me so 2 1 and if we do logarithm base 2 of 2 to the negative 1, so if you plug in for x a power of the base, then we're creating this inverse situation here. The logarithm base 2 and an exponential base 2 are going to cancel each other out, and we're going to get just the exponent. So the y value is the negative 1. The x value is 2 to the negative 1, which is one half. So you have one half, negative one, and hopefully that's enough to jog your memory and go, oh yeah, I remember a logarithm is going to look something like that. Now I don't want to have to do the plotting of points. 
my goal is that you just know and remember what a logarithm graph looks like. You know, it's going to be that inverse of an exponential. So if we graph y equals 2 to the x, I think we're to a place where we remember pretty well what an exponential growth and decay is going to look like. <coughs> And then from that, we have to be able to know and remember and distinguish what's the graph of a logarithm going to look like. So, again, I'm going to just plot a couple points to show you that as an option. This is not really where I want to go with this. But if we graph, say, y equals the logarithm base 5 of x, just to remind yourself, if you get stuck, oh, I wonder what a logarithm graph looks like, Plug in powers of the base. And a nice power of any base is going to be 1. Because that is the base to the 0 power. So when you plug in 1, you're getting a log base 5 of 1, which we hopefully know is 0. Because that's the log base 5 <coughs> of 5 to the 0. So it's going to contain the point 1, 0. If you plug in 5 to the first, another power of 5, then that is going to be equal to 1, the exponent. So you input 5, you output the 1. So we're going to go way over to 5, 1. When you put in 5 to the negative 1, you're going to output the negative 1 because the logarithm base 5 and exponential base 5 are inverses, giving it the y is negative 1 when the x value is 5 to the negative 1, 1 fifth. So 1 fifth is going to give you negative 1. And you can see it's going to look something like that. sense? Okay. So, what can we do for then translation? Well, we should maybe talk for a moment. What's the domain and what's the range for a logarithm function? What can you input into a logarithm that will be defined? And zero? Yes. So the domain is going to be x strictly greater than 0. Does it make sense why 0 is not defined? What if we tried to plug in to y equals logarithm by base 5 of x? What if we tried to put in 0? That would tell us the log base 5 of 0 is 1. So we write the corresponding exponential. Right? We get 5 raised to the y is equal to 0. And you see the problem? 5 raised to what power is going to equal 0? There isn't one. Right? It doesn't exist. So it's not defined at x equals 0. Okay. And how about the range? Okay, let's do some translation. So what if we graph y equals logarithm base 3 of x minus 2? So we want to graph it, and let's think what is the domain and what is the range. Our parent function, there's a y equals logarithm base 3 of x. And what's the x minus 2 going to do? It's going to move it to 
to to the right. Okay, so it's inside the log group. So every point's going to get shifted two to the right. So in particular, this point that was at one zero in the parent graph for a log group is going to get moved to where? Three zero. Three zero. And the asymptote, which was the y-axis, it also is going to get shifted two to the right. So it's now going to be at x equals two. And the shape is going to be that same logarithm shape. Okay. So for the the translated logarithm, what is its domain going to be? X squared and x squared and what is its range going to be? Oh. Still all the old ones. Is that okay? All right, we'll come, let's come to the board and do this. So I'm going to graph and find the <coughs> range of y equals natural log of x plus 3. So we're going to graph it, and we're going to find the main range. Domain was x squared and omega 3, and the range was all the old numbers. Okay. I think we're getting agreement. So, our parent function, there's our logarithm, our basic logarithm graph. And this is going to be translated 1 to the right. So the point 1, 0 is going to go to the point 2, 0. The asymptote is also going to get moved 1 to the right, taking our domain x greater than 1 and leaving our range as polynomial numbers. Okay? So let's see if we can, I don't know if this will clarify or not. So on the same axis, on the same axes, let's graph uh, y equals n to the x, y equals e to the x, y equals the log base 10 of x, and y equals the logarithm base e of x. So you've got to see the difference between two exponentials with different bases, how do those look, and the the difference between two logarithms with different bases, as well as you know, these should be looking like they're inverses of each other. Okay? And if you can do it, like if you're doing it at the chalkboard, try to use different colors for each one. If you're going to do it at the whiteboard or in your desk, see if you can somehow distinguish between those. Now we want to, it has to be clear what's the behavior like for an exponential when you've got the y-axis. Which curve is above the other on the right side of the y-axis? And which curve is on top of the other to the left of the y-axis? For the logarithm curve, same thing. Which curve is above the other to the right of 1, 0? And how do they uh, compare to each other between 0 and 1? OK, let's give that a shot. video here. So 10 to the x is going to be really steep once we cross the uh, y-axis and it's going to hug the x-axis really fast going this way. e to the x because it's only 2.7 compared to the base of 10. It's going to share that 0 0.01 but it's going to grow slower to the right and it's going to hug the x-axis slower going to the left. So again, the words that I have inside my head is the bigger the base, the closer to a right angle it's going to appear. And the same thing is going to be true for the logarithm. So they, just as the exponentials share the point zero 0,1, 
because logarithms are inverses, they're going to swap that, and they're going to share the point 1, 0. So the bigger base, that logarithm base 10, is going to hug that x-axis quicker, and also is going to hug the, it's going to approach the y-axis quicker, whereas the natural log x, which is a base Euler's number, is going to be further away from both axes as you move either to the right or approach the other. Okay? So the story in my head is that the bigger the base, whether it's a logarithm or an exponential, the closer to a right angle it's going to approach, even though it will never be a right angle. Okay? So let's do some practice problems. That's what I wanted to get from uh, graphing logarithms, but let's do some more practice. So we're going to solve for uh, x here, and I'll uh, move the x to different places. So let's say we have the logarithm uh, base 27 of 1 ninth is equal to x. Okay, we're going to solve for x here. Let's come to the board and do this. I'm going to pause the tape. So we write our corresponding exponential. Since we're doing this without a calculator, we can write both sides as powers of the same base. And so this is 3 to the 3x, and 1 over 3 squared is 3 to the negative 2. Once we have gotten them to be powers of the same base, we can drop the bases and get 3x equals negative 2, divide the 3 over, and we're going to get x equals the negative 2 thirds. <coughs> there we go. Okay, let's do the logarithm. We'll say uh, base 16 of x equals negative 3 fourths. So I moved x to a different place. A different group can come to the board and try this one. So the corresponding exponential is going to be 16 to the negative 3 fourths. 16 is a power of 2. And we can cancel the exponents. 2 gets 2 to the negative 3, which is 1 over 2 to the third. Okay, let's try another one. Let's do the logarithm. This time I'll put x here. And let's say uh, all right, let's give that a shot. Always we start by writing the corresponding exponential or the personal preference thing. So our corresponding exponential is going to be x to the negative 2 thirds is equal to 1, 20, 1 over 25. So this is what draws our attention. We have to get x by itself. To get rid of that exponent negative 2 thirds, we have to raise it to the reciprocal power. So then we have to do the same thing to both sides. Well, that cleans the left side up terrifically. Then the right side is the hard part. So recognizing five, 25 is 5 squared, which 1 over 25 means it's 5 to the negative 2. Then you get to, you when you raise the power to power, multiply those exponents. The negatives cancel, the 2s cancel, and you just get 5 to the third. And then that's going to take us to 125. Okay? So let's change gears a little bit. Still solving for x here. Let's do, um, let's do the logarithm uh, base 2 of the logarithm. Let's do two more numbers here. This gets too big. Let's say uh, 5 of x equals 1. We're still trying to solve for x, and let's bring a different group up to the board. Get another one in. 
So you can either write both sides as exponential to base 2, or say 2 to this power equals that. Either way, we get the log base 5 of x is 2, and so 5 squared is x, so we're going to get 2 point 5. We squeeze one in real quick. Let's do uh, let's do a logarithm uh, base three of x plus a logarithm base three of x minus two is equal to one. Okay, up at the board. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Using your property.